the world could be very dangerous at times. And in order to defend yourself, well, you gotta know how to defend yourself. And although there is the use of weapons, the main form of defense that people use is martial arts. Martial arts is the art of using your body as a weapon. And of course, there are thousands of different styles to choose from. But which one do you choose? Generally, there are two different types of martial arts, grappling styles and striking styles. Striking styles are where you primarily use striking movements like kicks, punches, knees, and elbows in order to inflict damage. This is best utilized when standing up. However, when taken to the ground, punches and kicks are useless. And this is where you gotta switch to the other style of martial arts, grappling. Grappling is the form of chokes, holds, and submissions to the ground. This is best used when taken to the ground. However, completely useless when you're standing up. Both styles are great and both styles have different weaknesses and strengths that complement each other. So the best martial arts styles are going to be incorporating both of these two fight tactics. Okay, so before we get into the tier list, I have to say that there is no mid martial art. All of the martial art styles that I'm going to discuss are either bottom tier trash or really, really good. And there's a reason for this divide. There's two different distinct types of martial arts, traditional styles of martial arts, and modern styles of martial arts. Traditional styles of martial arts are often developed centuries ago and followed a tradition and oftentimes did not change over the span of a millennia. Modern styles of martial arts focus on efficiency and combat rather than tradition and oftentimes change rapidly. And this is the reason for this divide. Now the first traditional style we're going to discuss is Taekwondo. Now Taekwondo has one of the most flashiest and coolest techniques out there. However, it's not very effective. If you've seen any other martial art tier lists, then you obviously know that Taekwondo isn't very useful in real life. Taekwondo kicks are one of the most powerful and fastest kicks out there, having the potential to knock out somebody. However, kicks alone are not enough to earn a high tier spot. The problem with kicks are you have to position yourself really good and you have to time them really well. They sure are powerful, however, kicks can be easily countered by one thing, grabs and punches. If a fighter gets too close to you, you can't utilize kicks. And because Taekwondo lacks punches and takedowns, Taekwondo is weak to both punches and grappling. Furthermore, Taekwondo sparring is a joke. I mean, just look at this. To me, Taekwondo is more of a game rather than a fighting style. To me, Taekwondo, as much as it hurts to say because I've actually done Taekwondo before, is easily F tier. Also in F tier, I'm going to place Aikido here. Now, it's no surprise that in the martial arts community, Aikido is deemed to be one of the worst realistic martial arts styles in order to defend yourself. The techniques in Aikido are purely defense based and this leaves a lot of weakness. Yes, having a defense-based martial arts is good. However, not being able to attack in a fight is pretty disadvantageous, especially in Aikido situation. Aikido's techniques are unorthodox and unrealistic no, require no. timing and precision that is, number one, really hard to master down. Number two, the precision and timing of these techniques are often unachievable in real fights. This is why Aikido has such a bad reputation of being a fake martial arts, which is why Aikido is an F tier. Indeed, here we have two martial arts styles that are the, by far the most diverse. However, in general, are not the best martial arts styles in a real life situation. First up is karate. Again, karate has different variations. However, in general, karate is actually not that effective in real life fights. Like Taekwondo, like Aikido, karate follows the tradition rather than actual combat. Of course, there are hundreds of styles of karate, but I can't get into all of them. But in general, karate is pretty outdated. And yes, karate sparring, like Taekwondo sparring, is very unrealistic. However, because of the fact that karate has more variations and punches and actual takedowns, karate is basically a more well-rounded version of Taekwondo, which places it at a tier above Taekwondo. But because of all these flaring weaknesses, it does not break into the middle or high tiers. Also in D tier, I'm going to play something very controversial here, place Kung Fu here. Now again, a lot of you are going to be mad, but like karate, Kung Fu, despite being very diverse, suffers the same problems as karate. They focus on the tradition rather than actual combat. Of course, there are standout members of Kung Fu that can break into the higher tiers, but in general, Kung Fu is more of a tradition rather than a combat sport, which is why Kung Fu is placed in D tier. Now the highest ranking traditional martial arts is Judo. 
Trudeau uses submission techniques that can actually be applied in real life situations. Hitting, holding down, and of course, throwing your opponents are key aspects of judo that can be applied to real life situations. Not only can the techniques in judo be applied to real life fights, but they can also do massive damage. To me, judo is actually above average as a martial arts, which is why it breaks into B tier, while all the other traditional martial arts are stuck in F or D tier. Now in A tier, we have all the martial arts styles that focus on combat, and especially one aspect of combat to inflict the most damage on their opponents. First up, we have boxing, by far one of the most famous combat sports out there. Boxing is most notorious for its punches, pieces of hooks, jabs, crosses, uppercuts, etc, etc. Boxing by far has the most punching variations out there, and that's all it needs in order to break into A tier. Punches alone, unlike kicks, are very effective in real life. This is why, despite relying entirely on punches, boxing is so much more effective than Taekwondo, which furthermore, boxing is all about combat and sparring rather than tradition which is why it breaks into A tier. Also in A tier, I'm going to place Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is basically Judo, but better. Because of the fact that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was derived from Judo to be a better version of Judo, just makes it overall just better. The main difference is that BJJ not only teaches you how to submit an opponent, but also teaches you how to inflict damage to that opponent while in that state. Judo teaches you how to throw down your opponent, while well, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu teaches you how to choke out your opponents while on the ground. And like Judo, BJJ suffers from lack of defenses from strike before they're able to take down their opponents. Now in S tier, we have all the martial arts styles that incorporate one or even three aspects of martial arts that make them simply just too overpowered to be contended against. First up, we have kickboxing, one of the most famous styles of martial arts out there. Kickboxing is like boxing, but better because it also includes kicks. We all know that kicks inflict way more damage than punches, incorporating both punches and kicks make you just makes you a much well-rounded fighter being able to launch powerful long-range kicks while inflicting short-range rapid punches makes you good at close range and long range combat similar to kickboxing and s tier we're going to have muay thai muay thai is by far the most powerful martial arts in terms of striking its kicks are second to none in terms of strength and can break and shatter bone however kickboxing and muay thai struggle from one thing your stances are actually pretty weak against grapplers. So when taken to the ground, which can easily happen if the grappler gets too close. However, this last style of martial arts does not suffer from the same problem. In fact, this martial arts incorporates both kicks, punches, and grappling. It's no surprise that mixed martial arts, or MMA for short, is one of the best, if not the best style of martial arts out there. Combining both grappling and striking, MMA mixes the best of both worlds. Of course, mixed martial artists can derive from different sources. It could be kickboxers, it could be even karate fighters. Combining both grappling and striking power, MMA fighters are both on their feet and on the ground. It's knockout power and by far one of the most realistic combat sparring matches out there. It's no doubt that MMA is the best martial arts to choose. It's no surprise that mixed martial arts is the best type of martial arts out there. And there you have it, a full martial arts tier list. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe because I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you do not subscribe, oh, yeah, come to your house.